The ancient prehistory of mankind is one of the great attractions of the Dordogne region, and the center of that historical studies is in this village of Les Aziz. This is the home of the National Historical Museum. You see it at the top underneath that overhanging cliff. We'll be paying a visit inside the museum. But first we walk out through this pleasant little village and admire the natural outcrop and cliff. These cliffs and caves are one of the reasons why early humans and pre-humans, our ancestors, were attracted to this area as far back as 400,000 years ago and the time of the Neanderthal men. The Ice Age came down through Northern Europe, the Second Ice Age, and it was so cold that it forced these early human ancestors to travel south into this part of France for protection. And these caves provided natural homes for them. The Museum of Prehistory is a brand new building, reopened in the year 2004, but originally built in 1918. It has one million objects in here that date back to the early Stone Age. They have wonderful exhibits that show you how these stone tools were crafted by the Neanderthal people and the earlier ancestors, the ancestors of Cro-Magnon Man. Cro-Magnon Man was also found in this region. He's the earliest modern human, dates back to about 40,000 years ago. The various stone tools represent the different periods of Stone Age technology. The old Paleolithic, the Mesolithic, divided into different sections. They've got reconstructions of what some of the hunters look like. The different historical periods were called, for example, Mousterian and Orignation. There's stone art here as well. Some carvings in the walls and nearby are some painted caves. Some of the earliest art ever created by mankind. You see how this rock shelter would have provided a natural home for these early humans. And the village is nestled right down below it. Les Aziz is quite an attractive little village, and there is a very informative tourist information office where Emily told us all about the surrounding villages, gave us some tips as to where to go driving and sightseeing. Uh -huh. First, in Fondegom. After in Fondegom, you can ask for Combarel and Cap Blanc, the three. After, if you want, you can return here for visit the museum. Uh -huh. Where is that cave, the uh, painted cave? Fondegom. Oh yeah, Fondegom. Here. And after the Vézard Valley, mm -hmm. with La Maison Forte de Régnac, it's a, a castle. Mm -hmm. uh, La Roque Saint Christophe, the city of the Middle Age. Mm -hmm. And after, you can go to La Côte de Jour for the point of view and return in saint léon sur vézère This village, it's a beautiful village. Which one? saint léon sur vézère mm, Okay. And if you have a time, you can go to Fontlac. Fontlac here. Beautiful uh -huh. village. Which is a small village. Yeah. What's your name? Huh? Emily. Emily. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Emily. How many minutes drive from here to Fonlac, say? To Fonlac? Mm, 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Oh, okay. When you find a friendly local expert like this who's so helpful, it pays to follow their advice. Driving through these country roads in the off season was really a pleasure. There was no traffic and Beautiful sights like this vineyard with a couple of castles beyond. Heading to the tiny hamlet of Fanlac. Here it is. We'd never heard of it before. And you probably never have either, but the tourist office recommended we have a little detour. It's a couple miles off the main road. And just have a look at this charming little peaceful country village. Homes made of limestone, slate tile roofs, surrounded by farmlands and vineyards. Very nice little spot, nice little detour. Just takes about one hour to drive up the little country lane, have a look, drive back down to the main road.
As we continue along, we're going to take another little detour, leaving the main road into a little side street to the village of San Leon. Another limestone village, slate tile roofs, and a very peaceful, sleepy spot indeed, most famous for its Romanesque church that dates back to the 11th century. It's one of the finest of the Romanesque churches of the Perigord. The River Vizier flows through San Leon. It's a very peaceful spot, nice place to catch some fish with a cat patiently waiting for his share. Yes, indeed, it's nice to get off the road and get away from the main sites and have a look at some of these little local villages. Rock Saint Christophe is yet another site with a lot of history. Oh, it's a cliff with different period of occupation. Mm -hmm. You have uh, uh, Neanderthal man. Uh, Neanderthal was 50,000 years ago. Yeah, and uh, cro -Magnon. Mm -hmm. And they did archaeological excavations and... Yes, yes. It's uh, very special, very special. We're in the largest rock shelter in all of Europe. It has a commanding view out over the Vezere River Valley. And this overhanging rock shelter housed as many as a thousand people in the Middle Ages. And for 50,000 years before that, had human occupation, starting with the Neanderthals and perhaps even earlier. It's about a kilometer long. That's over half a mile. This is the main part of the rock shelter. This would have been downtown. In the Middle Ages, it was a virtual cliff city. In this particular spot, there would have been about 30 houses. They've done a fine job here creating these small models and some reconstruction showing you what the village was like in the Middle Ages. Of course, this was occupied many thousands of years earlier, way back in the time of prehistory, when it may have just been a simple open rock shelter. But in the Middle Ages, they made it into a complete covered village, occupying five levels of the cliff face. Really quite remarkable. And you get a feeling of the scale here. This is the largest, longest rock shelter terrace in all of Europe. A kilometer long, about six tenths of a mile. And you can see it would have been a well defended spot. And yet they didn't have a source of water. So they had to haul all the water up, all the food, all the supplies. And these pulleys were built during the Middle Ages to supply the village with its essential supplies. They've got their own blacksmith shop here and the tools are still in place. These are reproductions of the time period. There's a little barn, there's a chapel, there's different living areas, habitation areas, all set in this fantastic rock cliff setting. This is believed to be the oldest carved stone staircase in Europe. Here's a Bronze Age burial a reconstruction and the Neanderthals fighting off the bears and another vivid reconstruction here in this terrific rock shelter, Rock San Christophe. From below you really get a feeling of the scale of this massive limestone cliff riddled with caves and rock shelters.